Hello everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Nile Tech. With your AI host Sarah. We will explore various fields of information technology and technology updates locally and internationally. We will engage conversations with many experts in this field. In addition, we will know about everything new in the field of AI, machine learning, information and communications technology and artificial intelligence. At Nile Tech, we will follow events, cover activities, and attend exhibitions and conferences on everything related to artificial intelligence, mechatronics, and information technology. Just stay with us. An AI-driven robotic chemist developed by Chinese scientists has automatically synthesized and intelligently optimized catalysts for the oxygen evolution reaction from Martian meteorites, offering a highly efficient and energy-conserving solution for the production of oxygen on Mars. Living on Mars requires the ability to synthesize chemicals that are essential for survival, such as oxygen, from local Martian resources. However, this is a challenging task. The study has successfully verified that AI can automatically develop new materials, which is expected to help oxygen production, base construction, and food production on extraterrestrial planets, and synthesize more chemicals from Martian resources to facilitate deep space exploration by humans, according to Luo Yi, director of Hefei National Research Center for Physical Sciences at the Microscale USTC. META introduces Purple Llama, a groundbreaking project designed to enhance AI security and ethical practices. Purple Llama combines tools like LlamaGuard and CyberSec Eval to identify and mitigate risks in AI-generated content, ensuring safer and more responsible use of AI technologies. This initiative marks a significant step in advancing AI safety, addressing challenges like fake news, cyber threats, and unethical AI applications. Psionic is creating something incredible. They're redefining what is possible by building advanced prosthetics. Around the world, over 50 million people suffer limb amputation due to traumatic causes. For patients recovering from a medical emergency, entering the new world of prosthetics can be painful. Most want to return to normal life to drive a car, to work out at the gym, to clean up around the house. But most traditional prosthetic limbs are crude, expensive, and fragile. Approximately 10% of patients requiring an advanced prosthetic arm can afford them today. Psionic, creator of the Ability Hand, designed and manufactured in-house with hybrid manufacturing methods, including 3D printing, injection and silicone molding, and CNC machines. The Ability Hand is promising to restore their life and mobility back to what it was. OpenAI's recent developments in AI safety, including their new preparedness framework, aim to ensure advanced AI systems like GPT-5 are secure and ethical. The framework addresses various AI risks, including cybersecurity and AI autonomy, to balance technological advancement with public safety. This initiative highlights OpenAI's commitment to creating responsible AI technology, emphasizing the importance of ethical considerations in AI development. Welcome back. Let's check out the coming report. وربما المساهمة في تشكيل الفكر الجمعي والوعي المجتمعي تشهد سنوات مصر الماضية إنها تتأهب حاليا لمستقبل جديد هو مصر الرقمية. 
The second edition of the Mobile Journalism Conference was held under the auspices and presence of Her Excellency Dr. Nivine Kabej, Minister of Social Solidarity and a number of elite scholars. About digital journalism, and it's been um, a while that the Ministry of Social Solidarity is invading this area a lot in order to keep uh, the momentum of communicating with uh, the general public, especially with the local communities. We appreciate uh, very much uh, the transformation and the digital transformation that Egypt is undertaking, and accordingly, the Ministry of Social Solidarity is not only in technology but in uh, functioning technology in order to reach uh, and to uh, market a lot of our. Uh, um, social causes and in order to build connections with the local communities to know more about them in order to have more um, real-time data uh, in communicating with them, listening to their needs and their priorities and also communicating knowledge for them, knowledge management, uh, technology uh, and uh, using um, digital journalism in research and in public surveys, public opinion surveys, in measuring the citizen satisfaction of our social services and also of investigating their opinions in many of the social causes that we're working on. It's been a pleasure to participate. This is not the first time in our participation and partnership together uh, in developmental issues uh, at all levels. And we're very happy to have this, especially that we have a wide range of young uh, students and young uh, graduates who are going to support this, uh, whether in social, uh, social journalism, uh, uh, digital journalism and everything, reaching to communities and responding and communicating and participating and partnering with them is um, a, a very uh, high objective for, for the ministry and mission for the ministry. The conference tackled main topics through discussion sessions and training workshops, starting with the future of artificial intelligence, journalism tools and techniques, passing through learning about mobile journalism and the future of the news industry in media institutions. We have to raise the awareness towards artificial intelligence because it's easier for us and it's a new trend. The conference discussed the skills of detecting deep fakes and challenges of verifying content and progressing to the impact of social media. You just said in the age of artificial intelligence, mojo or mobile journalism is taking uh, you know, the scene nowadays. Everybody is using mobiles to get access to information, to be updated with respect to what is going on, uh, whether in Egypt or abroad. So it's the trend and everybody is looking for uh, new innovations. I think that everybody is very much into you using AI-generated photos, but they are in a way affecting our self-image. You might uh, take it positively or negatively. Some people might not like their own image, I mean your actual physical image, and they go for filtered or AI-generated images which are not real. So I think we should be wise when it comes to evaluating ourselves. The conference also tackled how artificial intelligence used in medicine to search medical data and uncover insights to help improve health care outcomes and patient experiences. Mobile journalism and its role and its relation in the uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, as I am an orthopedic surgeon, uh, 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 actually uh, in medicine, the artificial intelligence has a very great role nowadays in all aspects of medicine, uh, starting from uh, detection of diseases and uh, methods of diagnosis and the planning for management and the treatment of different uh, diseases. Also in the medical research there is a great role in, uh, for artificial intelligence in medical research. The International Mobile Journalism Conference is the first of its kind in the Arab world to discuss topics and issues related to the production of different forms and content via mobile phones and recent developments in the form of media. It is a great opportunity to shed the light on artificial intelligence for a better world. Menna Disu e Nile Tech. Dear viewers, let's watch the coming interview conducted with our distinguished guest. To know more about our main topic of today's episode.
talk about uh, how the artificial intelligence is one of the most critical components when we are talking about the autonomous vehicles. Okay, so when you are talking about the autonomous vehicles, there are so many components that we should rely on in order to create a car that is capable of uh, traversing the road and the highway completely independent on any driver. Okay, so if we are talking about the autonomous vehicle, we have to have many sensors, including cameras, including uh, lidars, including radars, all of these sensors can help us to get information about uh, the surrounding. And once we have this information about the surrounding, the vehicle won't be able to still traverse the highway. That's why we start to uh, add this collective information and um, enter that into, uh, with the use of many artificial intelligence algorithms, we can uh, give the vehicle the capability of mimicking how our human brain can actually take a decision when we drive our car. So basically, if the car is moving and the, uh, the camera started to uh, detect there is a pedestrian who is trying to cross the road, then using the artificial intelligence algorithms, we can say that this is actually a person, not a car, not a cat, not a dog or anything. This is a person and based on uh, that detection, we can say that we should uh, decelerate our uh, vehicle or even we should break our vehicle completely. Not only that, but also our vehicle and using all of these sensors, we can also detect the lanes and we can control our vehicle in order to um, travel the highway and travel our roads based on uh, while maintaining the lane itself by centering itself within the lane and also using the artificial intelligence we can uh, we can control our vehicle in order to uh, maintain a safe distance between the vehicle and the uh, the preceding one and also it can maintain uh, the desired speed which is the cruise control which i guess uh, one of the features that uh, existing in most of our car, uh, cars nowadays However, this is not only it, it also helps the vehicle to take uh, a specific decision. For example, uh, we can add higher level of uh, a decision, a higher level of artificial intelligence in order to make uh, our vehicle more intelligent. It can uh, predict whether uh, a car is actually going to uh, change the lane and be in front of our vehicle. And based on this prediction, we can um, uh, plan ahead the desired movement of the vehicle. So if we have a car uh, that's taking a, a lane shift to the right or to the left in front of uh, our car, of our autonomous car, now we can decide whether to also decelerate or just to break our car. So this will have a, a huge impact on increasing the safety on our, uh, on our roads and this of course will um, have a great impact in reducing the number of crashes and reducing the number of accidents that um, uh, it causes a huge uh, losses in the human lives and that's why using the artificial intelligence in our autonomous vehicles is one of the most critical uh, components in order to develop such vehicle and in order to um, uh, comfort um, ourselves that it's safe to actually ride on a self-driving car. talking about the transportation it's not about the cars only but also we have the cars we have the pedestrian as part of our traffic system we have the infrastructure around us it is part of the, the traffic system including the traffic lights including uh, the road signs uh, including uh, the lanes so when we are talking about the intelligent transportation system, it's not necessarily only the car. So today, um, I'm going to talk about the intelligent traffic system. 
and by that I mean how we can make our um, infrastructure and our um, uh, environment intelligent enough that it can accommodate the existence of the autonomous vehicle in our roads. So when we are talking about that, the first thing that comes in our mind regarding the infrastructure is for sure the traffic lights. When we as drivers start to drive our car, we start to observe the traffic lights, whether it's red or green, in order to take a decision to stop or to just continue on our road. That's why we have to uh, make our, um, our traffic uh, system also uh, intelligent and we can allow our vehicles to just go on without the need even for uh, the traffic lights. So for instance, if we are talking about a case just in intersections, so uh, now we have to stop our vehicle uh, in one direction to allow the other vehicles to uh, pass away in the other direction in order to minimize any accidents. However, now we can also control our vehicles to understand and to communicate with each other without the need completely for uh, the existence of the traffic lights. This can happen by including a level of uh, artificial intelligence where we can ask our uh, infrastructure to talk with all the vehicles on the roads. And here we are talking about also the existence of the autonomous vehicle in our system. So now the infrastructure is intelligent enough using our AI algorithms and they can actually uh, tell the vehicle whether they can cross or not. Also a different scenario in a situation like the intersection is that um, we shouldn't uh, control uh, or we shouldn't have a similar interval between uh, uh, when we are switching between the traffic lights in any intersection. So basically we can uh, also make our uh, tra uh, infrastructure intelligent enough that it can observe the number of vehicles in one road and if it's uh, if on one road in the intersection we have more vehicles then we will allow uh, the traffic light to be green for a longer interval compared to the other uh, roads in the intersection where we have a fewer number of vehicles then uh, we can increase or we can play with the uh, traffic timing and also using the cameras we can observe whether we have for for instance an ambulance uh, that is an emergency and by observing this, uh, this ambulance and by um, understanding that using the AI algorithm that it is an emer emergency case, we can allow our uh, traffic light to open and just go green out of nowhere in order to allow the ambulance to continue in its, in its own way. So here we are um, helping our uh, roads to be smart enough in order to help uh, uh, us as drivers and us as humans. Not only that, the intersection is just one case. When we're also talking about the coordination of uh, driving on the highway, we can see that all the vehicles are basically moving in different lanes. So we can assist our vehicles to control their speeds or to know uh, the speeds um, of each game solely. Here, as us as drivers, we highly rely on um, the, traffic, uh, the traffic signs where we can observe the exact desired speeds on the highway. However, using the AI uh, algorithm, we can simply send to the vehicle that you should continue with a specific speed. And this speed shouldn't be uh, a constant all the time. Basically, we can vary the speeds based on the traffic uh, jam on the highway. So we can send to the vehicles please, you can go a little bit faster because the highway is completely empty. Or if we have a congestion, in that case, we should ask all the vehicles to move in a slower speed. So now we can vary our speed based on the traffic, uh, the traffic system and the traffic conditions. And also, we can observe and get information about the rush hours and we can send, and the infrastructure can send to the vehicles notification that there is a, a traffic jam in that specific road, please shift and take an alternative. So using uh, this intelligent traffic system we can um, increase the mobility on our highway, we can, uh, uh, we can reduce so much time waste and accordingly it will save us lots of money because basically we can go to our world just on time. And this will have a great impact in our, uh, in our uh, human lives and also it can help in the environmental sustainability because basically we are going to reduce uh, lots of fuel consumption.
It is the end of this episode of Nile Tech. See you in a new edition with more updated subjects related to information technology and artificial intelligence. Waiting for your comments and opinions on the program's Facebook page.